Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Today we're going to do some coloring. So I need to zoom in. Ooh, that's quite, quite a zoom there. Now let's see if I can find me on Facebook so I can see your comments. All right, there we are. Okay, hello, hello. See you guys jumping on. So today is day eight of my 12 days of Christmas. Hi, Kathy. Um, day eight is all bundled up. Tomorrow is Joyful Flurry. And of course, the dies have sold out. <laughs> I've just decided that I'm just going to keep with my original plan because I don't have time to design other projects. I am working this week on getting Club Create out getting the calendar class done and getting um, a team, big team training packet out. So we're just going to stick with it. All right. And plus, <laughs> at this point, if you haven't ordered something, it's not going to get to you by Christmas anyways, in time for you to make things. So we're just going to stick with it, especially for those of you that already have it. Hello, 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 everybody. Okay, I'm going to get started because the coloring is going to take quite a bit of time today. Um, first of all, let's look at prizes. Um, uh, Friday's winner is Debbie Schultz. Debbie, I have your mailing address. Um, thank you for entering to win. Uh, you're getting the Grassy Grove bundle. Um, today over at pinkbucker.com, hopefully the post is up. Let's see. I'm going to be giving away the Santa's Delivery bundle, which is a really good one. Um, does, did the post not go up? What the heck? Oh, there it is. Okay. So if you, uh, pinkbuckaroo.com, scroll down underneath the second supply list, you'll find a paragraph that says, I'm giving away prizes. Click this link. And all you have to do is answer a couple of questions, a Christmas, an a Christmas question and your address. And then I will pick a winner at random on Wednesday during my Facebook Live. Um, also, I wanted to remind you that today is the last day to get last week's projects. And I forgot I was going to show you which ones are we're doing. We're going to do the, the make and takes, free make and takes are going to be this one, this one, and I don't know which other one. I haven't totally decided. You know, would it be bad if I included the candy cane one? Because I got a box today that I ordered back at the beginning of the month that has a bunch of this paper in it. So I think we'll do these three projects for the free make and takes. Oh, I'm out of the camera. I'm zoomed in because we're going to color. So that's why it's super zoomed in. Okay, so if you put your order in by Monday, by today at midnight, Using this host code, which you can't see because I've zoomed in, um, you will get these three projects for free. I will get them in the mail on Wednesday. Um, the host code is also over on my blog post today because I zoomed in. You can't see it, but it's there. Okay, so that is that. And this is what they look like when they come, by the way. Here are the Scotty ones. All right, so this, these make and takes will be a mixture of stamp sets. I don't send any stamped images. You'll have to have the stamps and the, yeah, I know Mary, the paper's sold out. That's why I was saying I want to use it up. I have three brand new packages of it. Um, so I will include that project so that I can give that paper away. Boom, yeah, I can use it up. So many things have sold out. I was looking last night, going through, <laughs> trying to figure out what I'm gonna do on Thursday and Friday. Because, well, the barn is still tentative if I can find some time to design those projects. Bar the barn, and then I don't know what we're going to do on Friday. So we, we will see. We, we, we shall see. Stay tuned. Okay, so I thought I would do the coloring first. We've got these adorable little critters. Um, did you already send the Scotty ones? Yes, I did, Michelle, a while ago. Well, a while ago. That would have been this week on... That would have been just Wednesday. What? No. What is today? That would have been last Wednesday. So you haven't had time to get them. 
Um, they usually take five or six days, plus it's Christmas shipping, which we all know is bonkers. So you probably haven't had time to get them. All right, we're gonna do both of these at the same time. They are so cute. This is my favorite kind of stamp set, Black Line Images, where we can color them with stamp and blends. You guys know, love coloring with my stamp and blends. So we're just gonna stamp them at the same time and get the coloring done here at the beginning. So I'm gonna stamp them, ink them up in Memento Black, get them nice and inked, and then lay them down on my um, base for my Stamparatus. And let's do it again, because I like it to be nice and dark. I really need to re-ink my Memento, it looks like. Hi, Emery, your paper is still waiting for you, but today it's not sitting on the porch waiting for you, because it is like, disgusting outside you guys soup if i ever saw soup weather soupy weather it is today here in san antonio it is awful and it wasn't i didn't think it was supposed to be like this all day but it is disgusting i went for a walk this morning and i came back and i was soaking wet and it wasn't raining it was just that you know gross soupy weather gross so amory when you are ready for your paper you let me know and I'll set it out. I don't want to set it out and to get all yucky. Okay, let's see. Now I've got to figure out where I am in the camera because things are zoomed in. I moved my desk back to the original position because it was weird. Okay, so I need to come down a little bit. Let's see, down a little bit. I don't want you guys to see my feet. I am still wearing flip-flops. <laughs> Oh, it's gorgeous in South Carolina, Mary. Lucky lady. Let me come down a little bit more. You know, we had a gorgeous day yesterday, so I shouldn't complain. We had a gorgeous day. Okay, now you guys, hopefully, I'm gonna try to stay in the frame, okay? Now, I talk about Melanie Hyde all the time. She's a Stampin' Up! concept artist. She's my favorite stamper in the whole world. And she runs, her and two other concept artists run an Instagram account called Stampin' Through the Catalog. It's my favorite Instagram account. If you guys haven't checked it out, go check it out. They do, they feature different stamp sets each week. And then they will, if you tag them, they'll showcase your photo. But they also um, submit their own projects too, which is so fun. So she did this, boat. well, she did, no, she did both critters. And she used both blends and pencils to add some detail. So I'm gonna just basically do what she did because it was so awesome. Um, are you guys on Instagram? Look for Stampin' Through the Catalog, that's what it's called, and it is a really good Instagram account. Uh, make sure you watch their stories too because that's where they feature um, everybody's projects. It's such a good place to get inspiration. Okay, so what I'm doing is soft suede light. So I'm just gonna start and give our, our mousse a little, just a little coating of light soft suede. Um, when I see a project on Instagram that I like and I wanna remember, you know, like, like I can't pin, you can't pin things to Pinterest from Instagram, not that I know that you, if you can, I don't think you can. So what I do is I take a screenshot of it. Do you guys do this? I know I'm not the only one. I take a screenshot. So then on your phone, you can go back and look at the screenshot album. So my screenshot album has a lot of random stuff in it, but it's also where I have Instagram inspiration. Now you can also save, there's like a little bookmark thing. And I've been doing that lately too, but I don't find that as helpful as the screenshot. My camera, how many, let's see, how many photos do you guys have on your on your phones? Let, let's, ha let's have a contest. How many photos do you guys have? Now I'm gonna leave his nose white because we're gonna come back and we're gonna kind of, we want that to be the lightest. Now I'm gonna take the, the dark, all right, and I am gonna, put a, like a shadow line under his scarf, but I'm also gonna go kind of down his his little rump <laughs> and um, under his leg, this back leg would be dark. 
And then this front leg is not gonna be dark because it's kind of out front. But I am gonna add a little more dark like this wherever there would be a shadow, okay? Now I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of try to stay in these smaller areas. So you go back with your light. I want to see how many how many photos you guys have, and then I'm gonna tell you how many I have. Okay? I'm gonna I wanna see what you guys have. Patricia! Patricia. That has to be a typo. That has to be a typo, Patricia. Because I'm pretty sure you're going to win. That is craziness. All right, I'm doing a little bit of dark here on his nose. Down around his patience. You have 4,400. Emory has 9,400. Um, Cindy, 25,000. That's a lot. That is a lot. Now, Cindy, you're, aren't you a real estate agent? Do I, did I, do I remember that correctly? You, you have a reason. You probably have to take a lot of photos with your phone. Okay, so I want his nose to be rather light. So I'm adding some layer there, and then I'm just going to take the light and just kind of go down like that. And then I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to grab, hold please, hold please, grab my color lifter, I have a new one, and you can take your color lifter and just blend that down, like take your color lifter and kind of go like that, and it'll just kind of blend all that like that, so his nose is a little bit shiny, like, you know, that's where the, the light would be. Okay, I'm still looking, 19,000, um, Mariel, 47,000. Okay, you and I were very close. Patricia, it's not a, a typo. Apple Store assures me that I even have more storage room. Oh my gosh. You, Patricia, you win. Definitely, because you have twice as many as I do. I have right about 49,000. And, you know, when you get to that point, it's overwhelming. I mean, how will I ever, how will I ever clean that up because there's a lot of photos I can delete you know when I take pictures of cards especially I take several of each card you know because I don't know which one I'm gonna like better now I took crumb cake and blended down his legs so they were lighter on the bottom I'm taking dark crumb cake kind of adding some color there to the bottom of his hoof for his um his antlers, his antlers. My husband is a hunter, you guys, you know this. And he gets super irritated when people call something an antler when it's a horn or a horn when it's an antler. And so now I'm constantly second guessing myself. Is it an antler or is it a horn? This is an antler. I'm, I'm about 97% sure. Who knows? I don't know. He would love to have one of these hanging front and center, I'm sure, somewhere in our house. He really wanted to get that elk. He did not get that elk. All right, so crumb cake on the antlers. All right, isn't he adorable? Now, for his scarf, I'm gonna take light. You guys keep sharing how many photos you have on your phone. Let's see if anybody can beat Patricia. Oh, and Sandy, grandbaby, yes, grandbaby. And dogs will definitely <laughs> fill up your phone really fast. I have more pictures of my of Pepper and Charlie on my phone than I do my kids. It's embarrassing. I was going to sign up for this thing called Persnickety Prints. And they will send you 30 printed photos every month. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, yeah, that'll be good. So I went through, I was going to, let's, let's pick 30 photos from this last month. Well, I didn't have 30 photos of my kids. They were mostly all my dogs. <laughs> so I decided not to sign up. Yeah, Mary, I've had to um, upgrade storage too. Yeah, my, and my kids are getting to that point too where they're running out of storage. And I'm like, so sad. Delete, delete your stuff. Um, now... From what I understand, if you have an iPhone and your cloud storage gets full, 
This is Poppy Parade, by the way. You can go in. I think they keep all the backups. You know, when it backs up your phone, over time, it, they just keep adding up. And I think you can go in and delete those. I think, if I remember correctly, I may be just totally wrong. Okay, now watch. I'm going to take... Why is this a crushed curry, would someone tell me, on these watercolor pencils? In what world is that crushed curry? That is soft suede, look, and it always tricks me. Don't use your crushed curry. Find your early espresso. Boop, 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 boop. Where's my early espresso? And then you can just add like some little, you know, like, like he's fuzzy and add, add in some little, like, you know, whiskers, little texture for his hair. And I did forget his ears. We'll add that in. Like that. Okay. Now, let's do the raccoon. Antlers. Yes, antlers on a moose. I, I felt pretty certain about that. I knew you guys would let me know. Cindy, Apple has a feature to remove duplicates. Oh, really? We need to look into that. My mom just sent me this thing today. Um, it's a photo stick that you, I guess, put you know in your computer, and it will go through all your things and do the same you know, get rid of duplicates and stuff. But how does it know which duplicate I want to get rid of? You know, that's what I'm saying. All right, a raccoon. Now, I've told you guys before that our basic black is super black. And you can lose the image detail if you use that black. So I only reserve the black for, for certain things, you know, where I'm not real worried about losing any um, detail. So for a raccoon, I'm going to use just smoky slate light and smoky slate dark. So go around, add in your light, give him a little coating of your light, then take your dark and we're gonna color in those places that we want to be black with the dark, okay? Like this, hopefully I'm still, you guys can still see. All right, and then his little tail, like this. All right, and I am gonna add in some shadow underneath his scarf kind of at the bottom of his arm underneath his arm here around his leg this leg would be darker because it's on the other side of him and then just take that light and just blend it all together so i watched um um a show that i wanted to tell you guys about it's on prime and i don't know how we found it friday night we could not find Anything to watch that we agreed on. I spend like an hour look, watching previews. I think I would rather watch previews all night than actually watch a show. But anyway, it's this show, and I, I think I have the name right. Missing 411. Does that sound right? It's about hunters all over the United States who've gone missing. And it is the creepiest show that I've watched. I just finished it today here and it I, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to sleep. There's some weird if you like weird stuff you need to watch it and it's weird because they're they are missing like in clusters. So like somebody would go missing on a trail and then a mile away somebody else would go missing and a mile away somebody else would go missing. And then like n no record of them anywhere. No record. It is freaky. Okay, now this guy, I am going to add quite a bit of detail with my um, watercolor pencil because he's he's kind of a scruffy dude, this guy. And I'm using basic black. Do we have a gray? I don't think we have a gray. I don't remember what I used. What is this? Oh, maybe we do. Yeah, we do have a gray. Okay, let's use that. So you can just kind of flick in the color to give him some scruffy marks. Oh, I kind of like the black better. Play around with it. 
just give him a little more detail. I never would have thought to do this had I not seen her do it. You learn, you can teach an old dog new tricks for sure. All right, so has any, so Joan, you've seen it? Yep, alien, I'm, I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's probably aliens. That's what my husband says. <sighs> so Cindy, yeah, it's a real, it's a guy, he apparently writes these books and he's investigated all these cases. And it's not just hunters, it's hikers and campers and um, people just visiting national parks. And they, they will go missing. The first one they tell you about, the dude, the guy, the, he's like an older gentleman. <laughs> he's hunting with a bunch of other guys and they're all like spread out in the woods in a line. And he's at the end. And so after the hunt is over, they all get, you know, they all meet up and he's nowhere to be found. And they never find anything. Like his gun, not his walkie-talkie, nothing. No, nothing. And this is a guy who um, taught, you know, like wilderness survival classes. And so, so very freaky, weird things. My husband thinks that hypothermia was probably most of them. But then the last two things at the end are the two that will get you. I'm not going to tell you about them, but I'm going to make my husband watch it tonight. We got tired and we didn't finish it on Friday, but I did finish it today. Whew. And it is, it is creepy. There is video evidence and audio evidence of some things that are super creepy. That's all I'm going to say. So can you guys see the little detail on the raccoon? Make him a little fuzzy. You can't really do that with your blends because your blends blend, right? I mean, they that's like the point of the blends is they don't leave any little streaky marks. So, which is a good thing. But if you want to add in some of that detail, you can just go back with your um, watercolor pencils. All right, so I'm gonna just take my um, paper snips and I'm gonna go around and around. Um, I'm gonna tell you that if you don't wanna do this, cause this one is a little bit of a complicated, um, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Fussy cut image. You can absolutely just stamp him directly onto the rectangle, totally, okay? It, I just, you know me, I like to make things complicated. Um, I also wanted to let you guys know that if you're waiting on an order, I know a lot of you put in an order on the first and the second, the warehouse is way, way, way backed up. They got so many orders between the clearance rack and the, um, what was it? Last chance list and demonstrator pre-order that they are just like swamped. So if you put in an order on the first or the second from Stampin' Up and you don't have it yet, don't panic. Most people I know are still waiting. Um, I looked at my orders yesterday or day before and majority of the ones put in on the first have shipped, but not all of them. And same with the, the second, December 2nd. So just to let you guys know, if you need something for Christmas, you're gonna to have to pay expedited shipping at this point. Um, there's no way you'll get it by Christmas if you just go with regular shipping. So just FYI, if you're a last minute Lucy, you're gonna to have to pay. I have been paying expedited shipping on every single order I have put in in the last few weeks because I need the stuff, you know, for classes and things. And it's uh, it's been quite the uh, costly experience, but. You know, that's how it always is around Christmas. But I don't know, it was like a, it was like a crazy um, swarm of orders, if you will, those first few days of December. And they have people in the warehouse picking orders that don't even normally work in the warehouse. Like everybody in the company goes down and takes a turn picking orders to help. I wish I was there. I like doing that. I got to do that on my million dollar Stampin' whatever it's called, Million Dollars Sales Achievement Retreat. And it's harder than you think. You can't space out. Like you can't just like, you know, you can't let your mind wander. Okay. 
I knew that was going to take a while. Now we're ready to put things together. So let me show you. I'm going to try to zoom back out. Let's see if we can do it. Come on. There we go. Okay, good. All right, so we're going to put the mousse aside and we'll do our first card, which is just a card. And we're going to use this snow crystal stamp. And this one, I believe, is carrying over, right, guys? Every time I think I know something and I go to tell you, then I start questioning myself. This is an awesome background stamp. And um, we're going to stamp it. Oh my gosh, it's very sticky. We're going to stamp it in Versamark a couple of times on our, where is all my stuff? I put it here. Here it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I know I had all the stuff. Where did it go? We're going to stamp it just on um, a piece of Bermuda Bay. And I'm just going to kind of do it in the corners. So we'll do like, oh, would you behave? We're going to do it like this. Okay, and you want to grab your embossing accessory kit. And I noticed today that I left quite a few things off the supply list. And this uh, stamp is one of them. So if you're looking for it, it's called Snow Crystal. Two words, Snow Crystal. And I also left off that embossing accessory kit. And we're going to use it for both projects today. All right, so then let's see. Let's put our embossing powder on it. Where's my, let's do that so we can see what we're doing. This is clear embossing powder, okay? It's really pretty. All right, so now I'm gonna put this in here so that I just stamp kind of a partial crystal right there, okay? So, am I out of the frame? No, I'm not. Okay. Like that. All right. And then we'll add some more. Boop, boop, boop. Do, do, do. All right. So now, we're going to hit it with a heat tool, and it's going to be beautiful. So let's grab, I'm gonna get my old heat tool, the one that I told you takes your fingerprints off if you're not careful, because it's faster. Let's see, I haven't looked at your comments. Let's see what you guys are saying. Cutting laminate skills that you never lose. <laughs> yeah. I'm lazy. Um, yes, yes, Kayleen, exactly. Um, blend and then watercolor pencil to add just kind of some furry, fuzzy details. All right, so hit this with their heat tool. There we go. And then grab your card base. I have a thick, basic white card base. I'm using my black and white designs, designer series paper. Just a one inch strip we'll put over here on the left side like this. Okay, and then we'll take this paper and put this, um, I think I'm gonna do like that, right here, like that, okay? Now I've cut out a seasonal label die. Boy, can you guys hear that airplane? It sounds like it's right on top of us. That was weird. We have military here. So they do, they fly different patterns and sometimes they're right on top of you. All right, you're the coolest. We'll do that on the right side. I can remember my rights and lefts. And then we're gonna cut off about two thirds of it. Let's do it this way, okay? Like that. And I can't keep up with comments today. My stupid iPad will not will not um keep up. Yeah, the, the clear embossing powder, I don't use it that often, but when I do, I'm always like, ah, I really need to use that more often. It really is pretty. Alright, our little raccoon. 
He's gonna go just right here with some dimensionals and then right here like that. Now his little hand is out like he's holding something. So I cut a little heart, a polished pink heart using the tiniest heart from the Give It A Whirl dies. And this piece of polished pink, when I pulled it out of my scrap drawer, already had an adhesive sheet on the back. So I was like, perfect. We will use that. I have scrap drawers. I have where I keep all my scraps of paper. Do you guys keep your scraps? I know some of you keep every scrap. Occasionally I have to go in and just grab handfuls and get out because I don't have any more room. It can become a problem. All right, last but not least, we're gonna add a few um, snowflakes and I won't tell you that both this glimmer paper and the dies are sold out, but I'm betting majority of you ordered it, especially this glimmer paper. And if not, use just white and add Wink of Stella. And if you don't have the dies, surely you have a, a die somewhere that is a little snowflake. Okay, so there you go. I wanted to get away from the traditional Christmas colors. I'm about sick of Christmas, you guys. There we go. And you know what? Um, and I totally copied Melanie just completely. She put little polka dots on the scarf like this with a dark to add a little bit of texture. And we could put Wink of Stella. Do we have Wink of Stella? Let's add a little bit of Wink of Stella to the hat, to the heart, and the scarf. Like that. Okay, so there's that project. Now, the second project I wanna show you is a hot cocoa packet. And you know what, I'm gonna to have to clean up first because all of that is on another tray. So let me do that. Let me get all of this out of the way. And then I will show you the next project. Um, the next project, if you got my retreat in a box, this will look familiar. This is a hot cocoa holder hot cocoa packet. And I, again, cannot claim this project. This was my uh, partner for my retreat, Deborah. This was her design. And I thought it was pretty awesome because it's really simple and it would make a great um, treat for school. Like if your kids do Polar Express, I know a lot of schools will do the Polar Express thing and you wanna send in treats, or you have a Polar Express themed party, this would be a fun way to do it. So this, what it's in is one of our clear envelopes. If you look on the catalog page, this is something else I left off the supply list. If you look on the catalog page, it has envelopes. It, it's kind of hidden. It has the envelopes kind of like in a little like fan, and the one on the bottom is a clear envelope. So this fits in a clear envelope. So you can just pack it up, package it up nicely. And we have this little peppermint stick and inside, well, I'll just open it up so you can see. It has just this little thing that will hold on to your hot cocoa packet. Okay. So really easy. Um, let me show you. I've got a piece of Coastal Cabana. It's four by 11 and I scored it at five and a fourth and five and three fourths. And then we've got, um, well, why did that fall off? That was weird. We have a piece of um, Bermuda Bay. I'm sticking with the non Christmas colors for this project too. Um, Bermuda Bay, and it is, let me see if I can remember off the top of my head, three and three fourths by five. And we're just gonna stamp those snowflakes. This is from all bundled up set, the stamp. And we're gonna put that right on the front. Okay, like that. And then I've got a piece of um, designer series paper and I've got a stitched rectangle. Now, if you're gonna stamp your mousse on a stitched rectangle, you're gonna probably need to go up a size on your stitched rectangle. I think he's a little bit bigger than this stitched rectangle. Okay, so then you put your DSP right here, 
and you put your rectangle right here. And then you get your cute star of the show. And we're gonna put him right there. Now we're gonna do some more embossing. Let me grab my embossing buddy. This is Poppy Parade. And I'm gonna stamp the sentiment in Craft White. You could also do Versamark. Your friendship warms my heart. Oh, I did it crooked, let's try it again. Well, we'll, we'll cut it straight. <laughs> and then I've got white. That's why I didn't cut the strip first. And look, you know what I did? I stamped it where I didn't put the embossing buddy. So let's do it one more time up here. There we go. Hey, and that's straight. All right, boop, boop. Might as well do these two. We can use them later for something. Well, we didn't use the embossing buddy, so maybe not. All right, heat tool, where are you? Hit that with a heat tool. There we go. Making a mess. Trying to hurry. All right, where's the trimmer? Boop, boop, here it is. <laughs> That's my new, like, weird thing I keep saying. My husband's like, why do you keep saying that? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. It's a weird habit. All right. Your friendship warms my heart. Just trim it around. The height and the width of the word. And then I'm going to take it and just snip and snip. Grab some dimensionals. Right here underneath him like that. Okay, so now any designer series paper will work. Grab your Swiss Miss. You know, guys, you can get Swiss Miss anywhere. I think they even have it at the dollar store. But I ordered in bulk from Walmart. I mean, from Amazon because I needed a lot of them. This piece needs to be about eight by two and three fourths. So wrap it around, let's put that in the front, wrap it around like that, and then we're just creating a pocket. And we're gonna put some adhesive. I'm being really messy with this. All right, and then you're gonna lay that right in the middle like that. And so then it's, you know, it's just in there, it's like a little pocket. All right, so then, and I'm gonna fold that down because I caught it in my, oh, I did it backwards. Well, it's in the front, guys. Let's see, eh, we'll just go with it. So in other words, you could put a piece of white here and write a really long message to tell the person <laughs> why they warm your heart. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, you're gonna punch two holes and I'm not, I'm not drawing it with my pencil, so it's probably going to be wonky. And then you want to do two holes through to the back. Okay. And then you probably want to use a wider hole punch because it's a little bit tricky. And it's going to take me like 10 minutes <laughs> to get this through here. Let's see. Maybe I'll have some luck today. Hey, look at that. So go through the back first where your hot cocoa should be. Oh, well. Especially if you're giving it to kids. Who cares? All right. And then thread it through. Man, it's hard to get through these tiny holes. like that, okay? And then cut this end. Look at my table, jeez Louise. That's a big mess. And pull it through, 
tie it. And then these peppermint sticks I did order from Amazon. I don't know, you probably could find those in store too. I wanted them pre-wrapped. You know, a lot of times you buy these peppermint sticks and they are in a bag, but not individually wrapped. So I'm gonna take it and put it upside down like that, okay? And then you stick your little peppermint stick in there like that. And then you have a cute little hot cocoa treat. If you were having a Christmas parade in your neighborhood, this would be a cute little thing to hand out. We had one in our, well, not in our neighborhood, but in our little town this weekend. My daughter works at the coffee shop and she said she spent four hours making hot, hot chocolate. <laughs> and it was like 75 degrees. She was hot in the kitchen and she was ir irritated. But hey, we gotta have hot chocolate at the Christmas parade. Okay, so there are our projects today, you guys. I hope you like them. This set is really cute. And it's not necessarily a Christmas set. It does have one Christmas sentiment. It's feeling a lot like Christmas, which would probably go better there if you're doing it for Christmas. Um, but definitely, you'll be able to use it in the spring. I mean, in the winter, you know, January, February. Um, reminder, here's the host code. Let's see. Let me move my camera so you guys can see it. There's the host code. The projects for this week are this guy and where are the other two? Where did they go? Did I put them somewhere? Oh yeah, right here. And then you're gonna have a reindeer, another reindeer project. Actually, he's a moose. And then a Christmas candy cane box. Okay, so if your order is in by tonight at midnight, you have to use the host code. Unless your order is over 150, you don't use the host code because you get free stuff from Stampin' Up! And I will still send you the projects. Um, and I will start cutting these tomorrow and ship them out on Wednesday. Okay? You guys, thanks for hanging with me today. It was fun. I'll be live again on Wednesday. What are we doing on Wednesday? Um, North Pole Mischief. Tomorrow will be pre-recorded Joyful Flurry Projects at 2 o'clock. And then on Wednesday, I'll be live at 2 o'clock with North Pole Mischief, okay? Don't forget to go click and enter to win today's bundle. And tomorrow, again, there'll be another giveaway, okay? So click that link, fill in your information. All right, you guys, I'll see you Wednesday. Thanks so much. Have a great afternoon. Bye.